Dr. Darana Sands and welcome to The Needle in a Haystack for Negroes, a reply part 2. Remember, treaties with the king of Bulola and Biafra made by Sanil Kambo cede the sovereignty of those districts and a right on the path of Great Britain to establish forts and factories with clauses for the abolition of the slave trade. Thomas Fowell Buxton, Esquire. And this is from the book, The African Slave Trade and Its Remedy, published 1840. And from Edward Frederick Knight, The Oyu Rivers, the network of rivers, creeks, and lagoons that intersects the huge mangrove forest extending from the Niger mouth to the Cameroons had been one of the chief resorts of the British slave dealers, for here overpopulation had made Negroes cheap and plentiful. And this is from the book Oversea Britain, a descriptive record of the geography, the historical, ethnological, and political development and the economic resources of the empire, the nearer empire, the Mediterranean, British Africa, and British America, published 1908. So this should help us understand why the slave master and his accomplices are against Biafra and Ambazonia today. So don't be distracted by whatever is going on in Ukraine or Russia or wherever. The slave master will ultimately end up there in Biafra and in Ambazonia to massacre innocent men, women and children with his slave hunting accomplices unfortunately. And here is a shout out to our donors and Patreon subscribers. We appreciate your support and we want to say a very big thank you to you and to those who may consider to support us, visit us at paypal.me forward slash our renaissance or patreon.com forward slash our renaissance. Thank you very much for your support. Remember, we do not expect too much support because as Plato rightly said, no one is more hated than he who speaks the truth. And here is a disclaimer. This video is neither approved nor supported by the Directorate of State of the Indigenous People of Biafra IPOB. This video is also neither approved nor supported by Mr. Simon Epa. This video is neither approved nor supported by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices trading as Nigerian government. We are not seers or spiritualists but simply researchers. So please take note of all we have said here. And the main goal of this video is to prove to you beyond any reasonable doubts that Simon Eber is working for the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and not towards Biafra actualization. Please note that the Directorate of State of IPOB is also controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. All this we can very easily prove to you. The background. The so-called Negroes, formerly Ethiopians, have been victims of the universal gang up spearheaded by the Europeans and Arabs, including the Europeans living in America. Similar to the abolitionist movement and the civil rights movement, the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB unifies former so-called Eastern region of Nigeria to form a united front against the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and the Southern Cameroon's Liberation Council unifies the Ambazonians, which was Southern Cameroon, against the same slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. However, the slave master and his accomplices connived to kidnap the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, and the leader of the Ambazonian Liberation Movement is also in prison somewhere in Cameroon. If you remember, they came to Nigeria and Nigeria deported them back to Cameroon. Remember, the slave master and his accomplices worked together. The same way you saw that they kidnapped Nandi Kano allegedly in Kenya and took him back to Nigeria because like we told you, they are slave hunting accomplices. They lack humanity and they lack common sense and that is why Africa can never make any progress. The slave masters know this. All those governments you see there are filled with the worst forms of human beings. So after the kidnap of Mazenam de Kano, the slave master and his accomplices took control of the movement through its leadership called Directorate of State, while another individual called Simon Epa was previously seen as being in support and part of the movement, but we want to use this video 
to show you that he is actually against the movement and may have been part of the slave master's plot to infiltrate the movement from the onset. Opening questions. Did you ever hear how the slave trade was where Africans could have sold other Africans? And have you ever tried to ask questions around how a man could sell another man or a son could sell his father? If you believed the false narrative of the slave master and his accomplices that it was possible for one man to sell another, will you be kind enough to break down for us how a man could sell another man? Example 1. The man ties the sons. 2. Carries him off to the market. 3. What people who saw him going would say to him and how the European takes the victims from the market or from wherever he buys them to the coast for shipping. Remember at that time there were no airplanes so it was just about shipping. So we want you to do us that favor if you still believe that nonsense. So before we move forward on our video today, please watch the video of a house made in Nigeria which represents very closely how slaves are treated in what was Negroland and Guinea. And so please note that the transatlantic and trans sahara slave trades of Europeans and Arabs was brutal terror and man's inhumanity to man and not anything near the apprenticeship system in Negroland which the slave master called slavery and then used it as a pretext to capture and kill Negroes the way he wanted at that time. So the video shows a family in a restaurant with their housemaid or house help or the slave as you would call it and then the children with the man and his wife. And if you watched that little clip, just so nobody thinks it's fake, here is where the news media talked about it and it says, update, couple slammed for ignoring maid while enjoying ice cream and pizza at a restaurant while finally reacts. So our interest is just for you to know that it's true and it's something that actually happened and still happens till tomorrow morning in that area. Questions. If you watched that clip, permit us to ask you, do you think the family does not have enough money to treat their housemaid as they treat their own children? If your answer is no, it should explain to you what slavery looks like and above all to remember that this is supposedly black against black that is the same racial group. So imagine what would happen if somebody came from Europe and took away this girl and gave her a better life. Imagine how she would see black people. That's one thing you have to bear in mind. But that's totally different from what we're going to talk about today. But it should also help you understand that the Negroes are still slaves. And why in a place like Nigeria, the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices would rather build roads and railways to other countries outside Nigeria with taxes and money and revenue made in Nigeria instead of developing or doing anything for the so-called Negroes. Remember, we chose to use that term because that was the term they used during the slave trade. Then, when they finished, they connived to now start talking about how we are all Africans. If you think we are all Africans, those two people you saw in that clip, 
the girl and the family are they not all africans isn't namdekano not an african so why is the nigerian government supposedly of africans arresting him on the behest of the europeans if you think it's not the europeans especially the british show us somebody from scotland who is in jail for asking for scottish independence that should right there tell you that we are not all africans you see how far they went colluded with the europeans to kidnap namdekano for talking about biafra freedom you saw how the nigerians deported a fellow african in ayoktabi and serving life sentence in cameroon simply for asking for freedom in ambazonia that should tell you all you need to know that we are not all africans and so to the so-called Igbos today and there is something called Igbo presidency that is where they dream of being president in a place like nigeria they just need to bear in mind that what they are asking for is impossible because they are still considered as slaves so this is like a slave talking about ruling over the master which is impossible that's why they keep talking about it but they never implement it because the negroes are still considered slaves by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and in a subsequent video we shall prove to you why that is impossible and why it won't happen negro liberation questions do you remember the case of marcus gavin and w.e.b the boys do you also remember when Malcolm X called Martin Luther King Jr. a traitor? Do you remember that while Malcolm X favored self-determination and separation, Martin Luther King Jr. favored integration? Do you also remember that when Martin Luther King Jr. realized that they were integrating into a burning house, the slave master made sure something happened to both himself and Malcolm X? But then, did you also know that Martin Luther King Jr. was to visit Biafra just before he was assassinated? Remember, Biafra is the slave trade. Just bear that in mind. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. That's the slave trade right there. And when we say Biafra, please note that it also includes Ambazonia because both are treated the same way. Both are Negroes and the whole world are ganged up against them. We shall prove this to you. You don't need to believe us. And so we reference a seminar paper of 2001, the conflict between Marcus Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois, and it says, Introduction Theodore Vincent said, In black American history, there are two personal feuds which stand out beyond all others, W.E.B. Du Bois vs. Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois vs. Marcus Garvey. Reason enough to examine at least one of these two conflicts as they are an important factor of black history because they do not show united blacks that fight side by side for their rights but blacks that forget that they actually fight on the same side over a personal conflict. However, our own question would be, do you think these conflicts just come up from nowhere? And in terms of unity, as far as we all know, the robbers will always be more united than their victims. This is why you see that the slave master was the man stealer. The slave master is the one that comes to steal people's lands and things. And he is the one that will be more united than the Negroes. You can't say in recorded history where the Negroes had gone to anybody's land to lay claim to it or to try to steal it. And this takes us to the Simon Ipa question. Remember, for those in the diaspora, you may not understand what we're talking about, but it is important that you understand how the slave trade could have happened and how the slave master is still the cause of all the conflicts and wars you see in those areas till tomorrow morning. And so you may have been hearing about Simon Ipa and how his followers are increasing by the day. Have you tried to ask yourself if indeed he is working for Biafra to become free or for something else? Please note that we are not into propaganda or how he is making money. It's the bad and that. Before we continue, we are boldly declaring that Simon Eba is not fighting for Biafra to be achieved and we shall try to prove this to you in this video. All they are working towards now is to divide and destroy IPOB so that Namdekan will either rot in jail or get killed without anybody to react towards it. That's all they are trying to do. For the siblings who think if the slave master promised you that they will release him if you were to destroy all these things, remember to ask yourself, what did Abiola do to them 
that made them kill him? Absolutely nothing. He did not know he was a slave. That was why he was looking for power at that time and they made sure they killed him. So don't be deceived by people like Obasanjo. Many of them have Fulani blood or are simply descendants of the slave hunters. So the slave master knows where they are. So they appoint all those governors you see. That is why you see a governor will be looking at a dilapidated structure where supposedly children from his state should be schooling. He has enough money to fix it, but they are told not to do anything like that. So he won't do it. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. Just look at what is happening there and tell us which type of father you can have that is free. And then he looks at the roof collapsing and he has money but refuses to fix the roof. Ask yourself why all the governors you have seen, all the leaders the slave master had given you since you were born, assuming you are above 40 or 50 years old today, they are all behave alike. Ask yourself that simple question. So Simon Epa and Nelly of Febu, we shall use the case of Nelly of Febu to prove to you that Simon Epa is not fighting for any Biafra. Whether he is working closely with the DOS or no, the important thing to note is that they are looking to destroy the movement completely. And that is both himself and the DOS. And in the event you don't remember about the Fulani mastery of divide and rule, remember the book from Booker T. Washington where we were told the Fulas are an equestrian people with a cavalry armed with lances and swords. They are zealous Mohammedans with a knowledge how to divide and govern. We want you to take note of this because they have divided the movement and like we told you the negro is a born slave you see all of them adults with wives working for the fulani against supposedly their own people they actually betrayed in namdekan which we shall prove to you in a subsequent video but we just want to prove to you that simon Eber is not working for biafra and so did you watch simon Eber's emergency broadcast of wednesday march 9 2022 in his attempt to address the Idu issue. If you did, have you been hearing Simon Epa saying, stand on the truth, diligence and consistency? Did you observe from that video that his definition of truth is not universal? That is, truth is suspended when Nelly of Febu is involved because that's where his interest is. And please, before you say we are working for the DOS, the DOS is already compromised. Everybody knows that they are working with the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and that they sold out Mazen and the Kano. And they have sold out on the Biafra struggle, no doubt. So that's on the side note. We are looking at Simon Eber and what they are trying to do. And did you also observe the ludicrous defenses he put forward in defense of his position to support Nelly Febu and the Idu narrative? Remember, he claims that the do is okay, Biafra is also okay in that video. Did you also hear his defense on why he should work with somebody who said Biafra was dead, Biafra had been rejected, Biafra is an evil name, and Biafra is a slave name? Above all, did you also notice that they introduced the spiritual dimension, which is a known instrument or weapon against the Negroes? Anything you are dealing with the Negroes on, and you want to deceive them it's always god that they use but this ones they are using what they call elohim and then using spirits imagine simon Epa telling us that his own positive vibes for biafra will overshadow all the lies nelly is peddling against biafra that was his only reason for working with her above all he also claimed that nelly was doing a lot of things to see that Mazen and Kano is released, but he never mentioned what those things are. But like we told you, Simon Eba is not fighting for the realization of Biafra, but actually against it. And remember, apart from saying it is okay to work with her despite what she said about Biafra, he also denied knowing that she said so and turned the whole argument to how people want him to attack Nili Ofebu. Nobody wants him to attack Nili Ofebu. All people were talking about is why don't you condemn what this woman is doing? Did you read where Nelly of Febu started claiming Southern Cameroonian land? If you did, have you wondered why Simon Eber does not caution her? Remember, that is worse than any other thing you can imagine. That's a pure sabotage of the struggle. If you notice, she did not say we are brothers with Ambazonia, but rather that Ambazonia is Idu land. 
So the slave master can take it and go and meet Ambazonians and say, you see, the Igbos are coming to steal your land, which was exactly the same story the slave master told that was why he ceded what was then Western Cameroon or British Cameroons or Southern Cameroon as they are called to France in 1961 sham referendum. So what they are trying to rekindle now is that so-called Ibophobia created by the slave master against the Ibos. Remember, nobody was Ibo. Ibo was the British term for all the slaves exported from the Bight of Biafra and Benin. Nobody was Ibo at that time. Actually, the term Ibo means slave. And did you also hear Simon Iba suggesting that Biafra has no history with the area and repeated the lies of Nelly of Febu and the descendants of the slave hunters. Remember, they are working for them, so they must have told them what to be saying and what not to say. Bear that in mind, Nelly of Febu is working for the Fulani. So that's why she's saying all those things. We will see it shortly. So Simon Eba is also working for the Fulani. And the simplest way to see who they are working for is when their lies are uniformed. It means they must have met somewhere and agreed to tell that lie. So you probably heard when Simon Eba tried to suggest that the genocide of 1967 to 1970 was because of the name Biafra which is the same lie that Nelly of Febu has been going about with. And in the event you mistakenly join them to believe such nonsense, that makes no sense. If the name was why the slave master and his accomplices massacred Biafrans in 1967-70 to 70 genocide in Biafra, what is the reason for Ambazonia not being free? What is the reason for the war in Liberia? What was the reason for the war in Sierra Leone? So you see that the name has nothing to do with it. But like we told you, there is no way you can work for the Fulani without appearing foolish. It doesn't matter how you say what we're saying. The lies you will tell will also make you look much more foolish than you appear. And so we want you to take note of this, that if many people repeated the truth, it is clear that they never met and agreed to present whatever the truth is. For example, the sun gives light or is the source of radiant energy. You don't need to meet somewhere to choose to say something otherwise. But a lie has to be agreed on. This is why Simon Epa is blaming the name Biafra, formerly Biafra or Biafara, for the Mohammedans and Christians genocide in Biafra between 1967 to 1970. You might also hear them blame the name Biafra for the slave trade. The same way you hear Nelly of Fable doing, but we shall use those their lies to prove to you that they are not working for Biafra, they are actually working for the slave master. This might appear preposterous to you to hear that Simon Eba is actually not working for Biafra, but we shall prove it to you, don't be in a hurry. At least one thing you can remember is that we told you when he was still in the struggle, we felt or we were deceived to believe that he was actually working for Biafra at that time. But now that we have seen where he is going, we will now use what he is saying and what he is doing to prove them to you. You can't work for the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices without lying. That's impossible. So if the name Biafra was why the slave master and his accomplices massacred innocent men, women and children in Biafra between 1967 to 1970, perhaps the slave trade by the same Mohammedans and Christians between 1434 to 1900 and colonialism and neocolonialism between 1900 to date. This means the lie was agreed on. That's why you will see Simon repeat the same lie that Nelly of Febu is talking about. So we shall use that lie alone to prove to you that they are not working for Biafra. Remember he keeps talking about truth but we will use his words to prove to you that he is lying. Ludicrous lies about name. If they claim the name Biafra is why the Muslims and Christians are killing Biafrans, why are the same group killing Ambazonians? Why are the same group killing in the middle belt of Nigeria and southern Nigeria as a whole? Are they also bearing the name Biafra? The answer is certainly no. Why was their killing in Haiti? Why was their killing in Somalia? Why was their killing in Libya, in Liberia, in Sierra Leone? So you see that that lie makes no sense. But like we told you, the slave master is a subtle beast, bear that in mind. So we may not want to waste any time on the name Biafra, formerly Biafra or Biafara, but it does not justify killings by the slave master and his accomplices. So they are just looking for pretexts and excuses. 
but we will show you where they are headed to after we have proven to you that Simon Eba is not fighting for any Biafra at all. He is working for the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. And remember to ask yourself, why did Nelly of Webu concoct Biafra as where Biafra came from? Which is a lie, everybody knows. It doesn't matter how you say it. This Nelly of Webu claims to be a doctor, which we know that the slave master's education is mere conditioning. So why do you think she concocted that lie? Do you think Simon is not saying all those things? Why do you think Simon is quiet and silent about them? If he was coming from the DOS, even though we know the DOS is also in the hands of the slave master and his accomplices, he would have been making expositions, proving that they are liars. But why does he not do any expositions about Nelly and all her lies? Because she's been lying all over the place. And remember, Nelly of Febu also claimed that Arochuku people were responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans sahara slave trades between 1434 to 1900, which is also a very big lie. So these lies are what we shall use to prove to you that they are not fighting for Biafra. They are fighting to divide the struggle. They are now controlled by the slave master and his accomplices. It will also help you understand how the slave master leverages on the nature of the Negro as a born slave. To further enslave Negroes. In the event you have forgotten, remember Nelly of Febu allegedly went to the DOS claiming that Elohim had rejected DOS and her solution was for them to change their name from DOS to whatever. Now ask yourself who else does that thing? That's the descendants of the slave hunters. That's how they reason. When they tried to privatize Nepa, all they did was to rename it to NEPA, NEP, PLC. That's their understanding. That's how their brains work. The slave master does not install them in positions of power because they are good. He positions them there because he knows they won't offer anything good to the Negroes and they allow him to continue to enslave the Negroes, unfortunately. So now, is it not the same thing you are seeing here? That Arochuku or Aros were responsible for the slave trade. But then, instead of going to the Aros, to atone for what she claims they did, she's now telling all of us to come and atone for what she claims another people did. And that's also another lie. Remember, she is not talking about the Fulanese atoning for what they did, the Arabs, the Muslims and the Christians, the British, the Americans that were capturing the slaves. She's not talking about them atoning, she's talking about a tiny portion of the entire area where they were capturing the slaves from. And so again, we ask you, do you think Simon Epa does not know all these things are lies? Why does he not do an expedition to expose Nelly and her lies if they were not together in this game? And here you can very easily see that she is a doctor, perhaps a doctor of letters. She holds a PhD in one nonsense or the other, but he says education specialist. So you can imagine the type of knowledge this type of person can impart on people when all she is saying cannot be cited or referenced in any historical record. Everything she's saying are lies, but yet she's boldly propagating them. And if you don't understand where this is coming from, remember when Marcos Gavi said this, the threaters of other races is generally confined to the mediocre or irresponsible individual, but unfortunately the traitors among the Negro race are generally to be found among the men with the highest place in education and society, the fellows who call themselves leaders. You see that she holds a PhD but lacks common sense, that is basic common sense. So when we told you that education does not mean knowledge, now you understand what we mean. So we see clearly here where she concocted Biafra. Biafra is a slave ritual name meant to destroy and exterminate the children of light. Always bear in mind that when the slave master alleged that the creator created night and day, the creator never said the night is evil while the day is good. Both were to complement each other. You need to bear that in mind. But some of these things were created at the time they claimed that the Negroes were not human. So they are black. Black is evil. That's where they are coming from. But like we told you, she holds a PhD, but she lacks common sense. After all, people like Obasanjo hold PhDs too. So even if you thought education was knowledge, it is clear that it couldn't have been. After all, the slave master's education is where you are told something and you are asked questions about what you were told and your ability to reproduce what you were taught. 
it's just what the slave master's education is all about it doesn't teach you common sense so here when she claims children of light who is children of darkness and what is the difference between light and darkness if we assume they are without conceding that some people are blind and some people are not and she goes on to write Biafra is a slave and betrayer name that's why we continue to betray it is sad to note that a Catholic knight signed this slave document, reject the slave name and get your freedom. Observe that the person writing this garbage holds a PhD, but is not holding the Catholic that signed the document accountable or responsible. Is not holding the British that won the contract too, because she is working for the British and the Fulani, who were the slave hunters at that time. And so to show the idiocy and the lie of Nelly Ofebu and Simon Epma, let us reference the interesting narrative of the life of Olo de Quiano, Augustus Vasa, the African, written by himself, and this was published in 1794. Take note of the date. So when she tells you about Biafroha or Biafra, ask her to give you a date. And please never forget that they never carried slaves that spoke the same language in large numbers together. So she is trying to now claim that it was only Igbos or so-called Igbos today that were being sold, which is a lie. Remember, she is working for the British and the Fulani. So take note of that and we shall prove that to you. And so here, Equiano tells us that that part of Africa known by the name of Guinea to which the trade for slaves is carried on extends along the coast above 3,400 miles from Senegal to Angola and includes a variety of kingdoms. So this alone debunks her nonsense of Biafroha. She has no references, no citations, just concocted rubbish coming from the slave master and his slave hunter and complices. So there should prove to you that Simon Epa is not working for Biafra restoration because if he was working for Biafra restoration, he will caution Nelly against lies. But instead, he was trying to justify her lies as what the spirits approved for them to get Nandikanu released. Bear that in mind, approving the lies as what the spirits told them or whatever nonsense they are coming up with. Like we told you, the best way to deceive Negroes is with either spirits or God. Just find a way to smuggle God into it. They will start believing you. And never forget that the person writing this was an Igbo, supposedly Igbo person at that time even though Igbo meant all the slaves from the Bight of Benin and Biafra, where the other side was called Chromantis. And above all, you can see that he says variety of kingdoms. They were not all speaking Igbo, so how could they have been how they got Biafra? But like we told you, the same lies you see the government in Nigeria telling because they are the descendants of the slave hunters and they are imposed by the slave master. The votes do not count, which we shall prove to you. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. We shall prove it to you and also use it to predict the elections to show you that the slave master is never smart, but he is a subtle beast. And to further prove that Nelly Febo is lying and Simon Eba is in on their scam, 